What's up, everybody? It's Young Cure with a Metal Gear Solid 5 analysis. I know these have been a long time coming, but I've been busy with the second act of my three part Skyrim Machinima movie, Dragonborn Act 2, which will launch on January 22nd. So until then, I will be uploading analysis more slowly, but after that, all hell will break loose. But anyway, I managed to find some time to talk about the man who sold the world. Those who have finished the game will know by now that in reference to Phantom Pain, the man who sold the world is none other than Big Boss himself. But what does that phrase truly mean and represent? To understand that, we must go all the way back to the source, David Bowie, English singer and musician who became a major sensation throughout the 70s and 80s, as well as a major influence on Hideo Kojima's direction with Phantom Pain's story, plot elements, and themes. The term the man who sold the world that's used in the game is in fact, word for word, the title of one of David Bowie's albums, which was originally released in the US on November 4th, 1970. It was later released in CD form for the first time in 1984, which just so happens to be the same year that Phantom Pain takes place. But more importantly, within the album is a song of the same name, The Man Who Sold the World, which many of you are probably familiar with by now as Phantom Pain opens with a cover version of the song performed by Midge Yore. While there are a variety of interpretations for the song's lyrics, the general consensus is that the song speaks of the subject's encounter with a doppelganger or alter ego. This is something that is quite apparent with careful inspection of the lyrics. It's been cited that the song was meant to reflect David Bowie's concerns with multiple personalities and, interestingly enough, David Bowie himself inhabited another persona during his musical career embodying an androgynous alter ego named Ziggy Stardust shortly after the release of the song. As a result, many interpret the lyrics of The Man Who Sold the World as being David Bowie's interaction with Ziggy Stardust. With that in mind, if you look at the lyrics, you can see that at one point, the subject has a conversation with the doppelganger and says, Oh no, not me, I never lost control. You're face to face with the man who sold the world. So right here, you could look at it as David Bowie declaring himself to be the man who sold the world to his doppelganger, Ziggy Stardust. Now, what does that mean exactly, the man who sold the world? For many of you, it may sound like the term refers to a man who gave up the world out of self-interest, but in reality, it references a man who succeeded in fooling the world, a man who sold the world a lie. From that perspective, you could say that the song refers to David Bowie and how he sold the world the lie of Ziggy Stardust, a persona that became a big hit and that people consumed avidly for quite some time. If you keep all that in mind and think about Phantom Pain's story and plot, you will realize that there are a lot of parallels to draw from David Bowie's song. In the case of Phantom Pain, Big Boss is the man who sold the world. He's David Bowie, so to speak, the original. And like Bowie did with Ziggy Stardust, Big Boss sold the world the lie of his alternate persona or Phantom Venom Snake, who embodied Big Boss for a while until the eventual re-emergence of the real Big Boss, in the same manner that Ziggy Stardust took David Bowie's place until Ziggy faded away and Bowie re-emerged. Another interesting parallel is that in the same manner that Ziggy Stardust met an untimely end while David Bowie lived on, Venom Snake met an untimely end during the Outer Heaven Uprising, while Big Boss lived on all the way to Metal Gear Solid 4, even if most of his time was spent bottled up by the Patriots in a comatose state. Now, one major discrepancy in the parallel between Venom Snake and Ziggy Stardust is that Ziggy Stardust was technically just David Bowie in costume and makeup, whereas Venom Snake was technically a different person altogether, separate from Big Boss, who underwent plastic surgery and psychotherapy and whatnot to become a Big Boss double. But symbolically, this further drives the point that for all intents and purposes, Big Boss and Venom Snake are one person, that together they make up the entity known as Big Boss, in the same manner that David Bowie and Ziggy Stardust are one person, although in a more literal sense for them, two parts of the David Bowie whole. Then, when you consider how Venom Snake is meant to be a representation of the player, the messaging becomes even deeper, and it's Kojima's way of saying that we, the players, are as much Big Boss as Big Boss is Big Boss, that we and Big Boss together make up Big Boss and his legacy. And if you consider that Big Boss is a representation of Kojima, the messaging becomes that the Metal Gear legacy belongs as much to us as it belongs to Kojima, that he and us are one entity that make up Metal Gear. 
So as it turns out, like the references made to Moby Dick and characters like Ahab and Ishmael prior to Phantom Pain's release, when Kojima showed the tape labeled The Man Who Sold the World in the E3 2015 trailer, it was yet another huge hint regarding the true nature of Phantom Pain. I also found that it's possible to draw some parallels between The Man Who Sold the World's lyrics and the events of Phantom Pain, particularly the ending when Venom Snake listens to The Man Who Sold the World cassette tape sent by Big Boss, and the Metal Gear saga in general. If you make Big Boss the subject of the song instead of David Bowie, you will find that some interesting connections can be made. Obviously, the connections aren't one-on-one, -on -one, as the song wasn't written for the game. And whether these connections were intentional or whether I'm just reaching is a matter of debate. But Phantom Pain's story was written with the song in mind, and in turn, I feel as though it can't hurt to look at the two side by side. The song starts with, we passed upon the stair, we spoke of was and when, which basically says that the subject and the doppelganger crossed paths again, talked and caught up with each other, precisely what happened when Venom Snake received the tape at the end of Phantom Pain, although Big Boss wasn't there in person, which might be a reference to the next line in the song, although I wasn't there. This is then followed by, he said I was his friend, which came as some surprise. Kind of reminds me of how Big Boss called Venom Snake friend in the tape. Thank you, my friend. But more importantly, this makes me think of how despite everything, after gaining his memories back, Venom Snake decided to remain loyal to Big Boss to the end. The guy had just found out that after the events of Ground Zeroes, his entire existence was a lie, that his identity was stripped from him, and that he was used as a decoy and puppet to aid Big Boss's escape. That's a lot to take in all at once, and like many players, Venom Snake, a representation of the player, likely felt cheated and pissed to a certain point, so you could say that it's a surprise that Venom Snake remained a friend and didn't just rage quit. He came to terms with everything, accepted his new role, and moved on. Then the lyrics say, I spoke into his eyes, I thought you died alone a long, long time ago. Here we see the song subject talking about some of the things he said to the doppelganger. Namely, I thought you died alone a long, long time ago. Again, the connections aren't one-on-one, -on -one, and I doubt Big Boss had any intentions of saying something so cynical to Venom Snake in the tape, but you could still look at it as a callback to Venom Snake's near-death experience nine years ago, as well as his nine-year-long slumber as a comatose. You could also look at it as a bit of foreshadowing. If you think about it, Venom Snake's existence is pretty sad and lonely. He basically lived another man's life for him, and by the end of Metal Gear 1, he died a sort of lonely death at the hands of the son of the man whose life he embodied, all in the name of Big Boss, while Big Boss got to live for years to come. Moving on, we have Oh No Not Me, I Never Lost Control, which Phantom Pain could be referencing by how Big Boss never lost control of the situation, in large part thanks to Zero's efforts in conceptualizing the body double plan and thanks to Venom Snake's efforts in playing the role of Big Boss, all of which is expressed in The Man Who Sold the World cassette tape. The lyrics then say, you're face to face with the man who sold the world, which goes in line with how Big Boss finally reveals through the tape his true identity, as well as the lie he sold the world to cheat death. Now this next bit is very interesting. I laughed and shook his hand and made my way back home. I searched for form and land for years and years I roamed. Doesn't that remind you of what Big Boss did during and after the events of Phantom Pain? He metaphorically shook Venom Snake's hand through the tape, said thanks and good luck with Diamond Dogs, then he made his way back home. He searched for Foreman Land to build his new nation, Outer Heaven, and for years and years he roamed by himself until his eventual re-emergence. This next part of the lyrics I don't quite get. I gazed a gazely stare and all the millions here. Not sure about the meaning of this particular section, so I can't really make an educated analysis, but if you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. The lyrics then tread familiar territory, with the next part being, We must have died alone a long, long time ago. It's peculiar how the lyrics switch from, I thought you died alone, to, We must have died alone. Something similar happens later in the song, where the lyrics say, we never lost control instead of I never lost control. There is more of a sense of acceptance and codependency towards the end of the song, and I notice that this somewhat parallels Big Boss and Venom Snake's acceptance of their coexistence and codependence by the end of Phantom Pain, after which it is established that the two individuals together are what make Big Boss whole. 
In turn, when one or both individuals perish, you could say that Big Boss might as well be dead, which might be a reference to how the lyrics shift from I thought you died alone to we must have died alone. Again, I don't know how many of these connections were intentional, and in all likelihood, many of these are likely me looking way too deeply into things, but what I am sure of is that Kojima extensively studied the song's lyrics, and that the song became a major influence in shaping Phantom Pain's story and overall direction. But the parallels between David Bowie's Ziggy Stardust and Big Boss Venom Snake definitely feel way too deliberate for them to be mere coincidence. And despite the reservations you may have about Phantom Pain's overall story, you gotta admit that stuff like this is pretty damn cool. So there you have it folks, my analysis of the man who sold the world. Thank you for tuning in. Let us know in the comments below your thoughts and theories and interpretations on the matter. And to be further updated on Metal Gear analysis, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.